All right, my dog Tippy and I got a Buck Boost charger, DC to DC charger from Victron today, February 14, 2019. I'm in Oceano, California. And I got the charger actually hooked up in a Sprinter van for the first time just a few seconds ago. And so I started the engine. I don't have it professionally mounted yet. This is just in testing mode. And on a 24 volt six cell Tesla battery, I'm reaching 23.22. No, that doesn't matter. Uh, 21.50, uh, about 22 amps charging. That's because this is a 50 amp charger for 12 volts. And when it converts from 12 volt to 24 volt, it goes down to about 23 amps charging. And that's what that is right there. So I have a meter in the uh, dash with a shunt by the battery mounted under the bed. So this is the Buck Boost made by Victron. It's the 50 amp version, which is the one I recommend. The 100 amp one is going to be significantly thicker and uh, uh, over a thousand dollars more expensive. The 25 amp one is only a hundred dollars less, so it doesn't make any sense to get half for uh, a little bit less. This one is about $653, available only at a few in a few places. A few things I don't like, okay, this plastic cover has two little screws. I'll show you in a minute, but with the screws, you can't um, do much in testing mode because you have to keep on messing with the screws and you'll end up losing them. So I'll just set it there for now. And it doesn't allow much clearance for any kind of a connector. So here I have these kind of connectors, the kind you can buy at Home Depot and Lowe's. Those kind of connectors I like because you can adjust the length of your cable easily without having to use a brand new lug. You cannot use those because there's not enough clearance to tighten the cover. And this is a USB data cable. The Buck Boost has to be connected to the auxiliary battery in order to access it by way of the PC. So we'll go over there and check that out. Uh, this is the inside of the Buck Boost, what it looks like. I don't recommend doing this because you see the lithium, the uh, thermal conductive, or the uh, thermal grease, or whatever kind of grease it is, it's on the cover and this for some reason. I thought that was kind of weird. So don't do that. And here's when I first got it before installing. I'm going to use this kind of a connector right here um, between it and the battery. That's why you see such an unprofessional install right now because I'm going to use those connectors so I can switch between that and under my seat. I have a 120 volt to 12 volt converter charger that's going to go to another charger and then to the buck boost um, for reasons that's kind of complicated to explain right now okay my Victron monitor BMV 712 says 23.25 volts it was about 22 volts before I turned the vehicle on so I'm charging and now what was I going to get at? The software. Oh, you don't really want to see the software, do you? Okay, let's first look at the cover. There's the details of the cover. This photo I could not find anywhere online, so you're privileged to see that. You can pause to study that if you want. Here's the software. It's different than anything else I've ever seen. Uh, for now, I'm having to guess at some of these settings. If you know of any settings that should be better than this, please let me know because I'm just using my professional guessing on what to do. This is for a single uh, Tesla module that is rated at 
what are they rated at 4500 kilowatt hours something like that all this stuff over here I don't know uh, most of it I'm leaving factory defaults over here for the Tesla battery I'm not real sure what this means over here what's interesting about the software is when you hover over something the help menu changes for example watch see look the help changes that's pretty unique and a good idea actually so I do like that so you don't have to keep on referring back and forth to your owner's manual which is uh, actually quite wimpy there's not much um, to it here's the box since this is partly an unpacking video I'll show you uh, you can see I bought mine from pkys.com they shipped it just within a couple days I think about three days two or three days I received it and it was free shipping this is the owner's manual there's not much to it here it lists some benefits and oh no this is the Netherlands version so it comes with a Netherland I guess NL I don't know and then English and it the English version okay here we have the English version general features it's just a couple pages long and not much there it is that's it those are the instructions there's not much to it um, it kind of assumes you really know what you're doing before you buy this because the instructions aren't going to tell you everything this is not going to tell you everything either and might as well show you the battery it's charging is a Tesla it's um, 233 amp hours and 24 volts equivalent to about 466 amp hours and 12 volt and I need to probably upgrade the inverter because it cuts off a little too soon at around 21 volts so I have quite a lot of Victron stuff going on here uh, the buck boost that's pretty expensive but this is in a sprinter van with a smart um, alternator so that's pretty important by the way the Tesla battery is wrapped in a fiberglass blanket for extra protection from any kind of fire or sparks or anything like that and also maybe insulates it a little bit from freezing which was pretty unlikely when it's mounted here and yeah there's the software the software has to um, be extracted when you download it you have to have a software extractor and or an unzipper I mean or maybe that's the same thing I don't know but here they are it's called TS config is this is what opens the software up and then this pops up and searching for converter I know it's on COM5 because that's what worked before does it really take that long to open this up so I don't know what's going on there these are the two files you have what they look like when they're unpacked and you click on setup on each one of them x64 is typical windows 10 right there you can call Victron they're on the East Coast so if you're on the Pacific Coast um, then uh, they're gonna close pretty early around 2 p.m. your time Pacific so it's not connecting quickly I don't know if I have to give it more time or something so I don't know I had it working now I can't seem to get the software open I might have to contact Victron about that tomorrow the main thing is I did supposedly program it the way I want it and I think I'm pretty happy with I mean let's see what happens when I turn it off and we'll try to get it down to float charging and also see if the software will open up 
23.38 and see if it quickly goes down or not. I thought I heard an alarm go off on my Victron monitor. Seventy degrees Fahrenheit, that's good. Thought I heard a beep. Um, Alright, so why isn't this connecting automatically? There's a demonstration mode. I don't want that. So, I don't know. Let me unplug and plug it back in. See, COM5. says testing com five maybe you have to be super patient with that i mean in the year 2019 shouldn't be having to wait more than a few seconds well at least you got to see it working hmm. voltage has gone down 23.07 already floating so after driving around for a while or letting it idle, it'll charge the battery up, you know, 23 amps. That's pretty good. All right. Let's start it up, see what happens. Again. Okay, it's immediately pushing 21 amps. And I was reading sometimes it's not going to really push that many amps all at once so quickly if it feels like it needs to cool down a little bit or something. So it's a very temperature sensitive and controlled device that will um, limit the amps when this thing gets hot. I feel it as warm, not hot, and here you can see the thickness looks like about an inch and a half or up to about two inches. Um, since 12 volt coming in, I want the two gauge wire going out, I have just six, and I can feel the two gauge in a little bit warm. The six gauge out is actually cold. So, <laughs> you know, because being 24 volt out only needs half the wire diameter in, depending on the length, something like that. The 12 volt in. Um, ground, I have it grounded to the starter battery that's underneath this floorboard. It's warm. Let's see. So it's showing some kind of a purple and green. According to this, current supply and converter on. Current supply. So it's supplying current and it's on. So I guess that's good. <laughs> uh, let's turn it off to see what the LED lights indicate now. There's a few seconds delay when you do anything. So it's blinking, that means vibration sensor, when it's blue, and then battery okay. Um, yeah, so I'm floating around 23 with a little bit of solar, very little bit of solar coming in. The reason for this alternator charger for me personally, a lot of times I like to camp under a canopy campground where there's very little uh, solar available and there are no campsites with any solar, such as the Redwoods in northern Northwest California, especially there. Uh, that's a very, very desirable place to be, um, but there's very little solar and sometimes I don't have shore power at a campground so 
And this thing just came in a brown box. Nothing special. The label maker, the reason uh, why I have that is because when you take this cover off, you can't see which is supposed to, which is which. So I labeled underneath the battery cable to make sure I don't connect the wrong ones. So that's another design flaw where the actual, uh, this label here should be here. Um, and so ideally this would be something that just slides that you can, especially for the price, you would just slide it like this. This should not be something you have to deal with screws for $653. No. Also, it should be uh, Bluetooth compatible with Victron Bluetooth devices like the solar charger that I have in the BMV 712. It should be on that list in the Bluetooth um, Android app instead of a USB. This uses a standard printer cable which I have an extension so it'll reach to the computer and gosh I think that covers quite a lot um, all right so there's another look how big this connector is I couldn't find anything that was just a little smaller than this it was either too big or something get something that's undersized it also comes with see here I'm about to lose those two little screws these are the little screws I promised to show earlier of the cover that I don't like and these have something to do with these settings over here I have no idea what I'm doing there on this side over here so I'm just leaving it factory for the most part and I don't think I'm gonna mess with this yet it just depends on how this is all going to operate. Oh, look, here it came up. So, I don't know, maybe it just takes time. Uh, maybe because I have a long USB cable, I don't know, it shouldn't be. But here it connected on its own. Eventually it connects on its own. So you just have to be patient with it. Fortunately, it's not something you're going to need to be pulling up a lot. There's no reason... Uh, that I can think of once you figure out what the settings are why you would need to come in here very often so that's good and so that's about all the rambling I can come up with as far as any excuse to continue talking so I'm gonna let you go for now please uh, leave some comments on what you think the settings should be for 24 volt Tesla battery 6 cell and if you have any comments at all